Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is how is DNA replicated? So how do we replicate DNA? Um, so the first thing we want to notice is that DNA is replicated 5 prime to 3 prime. Um, so we saw that before, what that actually means, but just know that uh, DNA is always replicated 5, time, 5 prime to 3 prime. Um, and so basically how it works is we'll see what 5 prime to 3 prime means. Imagine if this is your DNA strand. And remember it's double stranded, but I'm only drawing one strand for now just so we can see it better. Um, so we have this 3 prime to 5 prime, and this is our parent strand. Okay? So it's parent strand, and then we have something that we call it, sometimes they call it a sister strand, a daughter strand. Um, let's call it, we'll just say both of them. It's generally probably daughter strand because it's what is replicated. Um, so the daughter strand is what is 5 prime to 3 prime. The daughter strand is what is replicated 5 prime to 3 prime. So we'll see that DNA is replicated in this direction, 5 prime to 3 prime. Because remember, DNA is always anti-parallel. Um, it has to match up um, going one going 3 prime to 5 prime and the other going 5, five prime to 3 prime in the other direction. So we'll see that uh, the way um, DNA is replicated is that you put first put down this primer and then you'll go down. And this primer is made of RNA instead of DNA. And we'll see the enzymes that are involved. Uh, but pretty much we see that it's 5 prime on this side and 3 prime on that side. And we see that it's anti-parallel. Okay. So we know that what does this is called something called DNA polymerase. All right, so DNA polymerase is what actually puts down the DNA. So it puts down the DNA um, and it sets those tracks. All right? And this is um, primase. So primase makes the primer. And it's an RNA primer, not a DNA primer, because DNA always has to start by uh, putting down the next nucleotide off of RNA. So it needs this RNA primer and this rest is DNA. Okay. Um, so we'll look at all the enzymes that are involved. Uh, so we already had DNA polymerase and we had primase. Uh, there's a couple other ones. So helicase. So helicase unwinds this double strand. So we, we it unwinds the double helix. Um, so that it's it's able to work like that. So if we can see like this, it unwinds. So helicase would work right here. Um, and it would spread open um, the double helix, the, the double strand. Topo isomerase. Um, so if you can imagine that this would cause a lot of coiling. If you ever had a, um, a wrapped around coil, like a, I guess you can think of it like a telephone cord, and you're pulling it apart. If you're pulling it apart, it's going to cause some type of tension in this area. So topo isomerase will relieve that tension. So it relieves the tension. Um, and the way it does it is not important for the MCAT, but pretty much what it does is it cuts it and it binds it back together. Um, and that would relieve stress. Um, we saw primase and DNA polymerase before. And the next one we're going to see is DNA ligase. Um, and we'll see that DNA ligase... Um, if you can think about it, it ligates bonds, so it, it connects two bonds together. Um, and so this happens when we have Okazaki fragments, or even just um, binding two um, areas of replication uh, from two different origins of replication. So Okazaki fragments, uh, multiple origins of replication, and they just bind them together. All right? So we're going to see actually how this all works. All right? So if we have this, we imagine this DNA strand right here. What's going to happen is the helicase is going to unwind them. Okay, so we have this right here. And let's just call this 3 prime, 5 prime, 5 prime, and 3 prime. Okay, and again, we'll call it right there. Okay, so what's going to happen is once this gets unwound, we're going to have two different strands. One is going to be called our le leading and one is going to be called our lagging. And we'll see that this is the leading and this is the lagging. And the reason why for that is this. Remember, DNA always has to be replicated 5 prime to 3 prime. And this is 5 prime to 3 prime of the actual replicated strand, the daughter strand. Okay? So we'll see that the, the primer will be put down and then it'll go down like that on the leading strand because this is 5 prime to 3 prime. So we'll have no problem going 5 prime to 3 prime. But in this case, um, we have 5 prime on the parent strand here. So that means the, the daughter strand would have to start somewhere in the middle. 
this being the, the five prime, and go this way to be the three prime. All right? So the, the, the primer will be on this side, and then the, it will go in the direction towards the right. And so if you can think about it, you can only go a certain way. You can't start all the way on this side. You can't start all the way right here, put a primer down, and just go like that and say, okay, now it's a, now it's a leading strand as well. Because that would just look weird. You would have one that's starting on this side, one that's starting all the way on that side. And you can imagine that your DNA polymerase is one object. It can't. It can't be spread out so thin. So you're gonna have these fragments. You're gonna have these fragments. So the way it's gonna work is when we're going right here, DNA polymerase can go right there, and then it's gonna shift over, start again. So you're gonna have all these fragments, and those are called Okazaki fragments. So at the end, okay, so now that we saw how those Okazaki fragments are made, how it will look like in the end um, is once everything is replicated, we have this one as our leading strand and this one as our lagging strand. Um, we'll see that uh, it'll look something like this, right? This is our lagging strand, our leading strand. Um, we know that um, the primer has to be put down and make all these little fragments, right? And I'm just gonna label this again. Um, so we see that always have to go five prime and three prime. So we cause these Okazaki fragments. Okay, so we're gonna see now how DNA is replicated, okay? So how is it physically replicated? So the first thing that's gonna happen, we're gonna see how all these enzymes work, um, is that we're gonna to have to split these apart, and that's done by the helicase, okay? Um, so I'll just label them again so we don't get confused. And remember, um, the way DNA polymerase works, it always has to go five prime to three prime. So we're gonna see that um, this is gonna be something called our leading strand, and this is gonna be our lagging strand, and we'll see why that's the case. Uh, so we know that um, in order for DNA polymerase to work, we need a, a primer. So we're going to see this primer go down, um, and it's going to go down like this. And our leading strand has no problem, it's not going to have any fragments, um, because it's going to go 5' prime to 3' prime without having any gaps. You know, DNA polymerase is just going to go straight through. But on the lagging strand, we're going to see that we're going to need these gaps. We're going to need these little gaps here and make these little fragments, uh, because DNA polymerase has to go 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Um, we have to replicate the next sister strand or the daughter strand of uh, five prime to three prime. Okay? And that's why we have these little that's why we have these little um, fragments right here. Okay? So how do we resolve these fragments? In the end of the day, uh, what's gonna happen is if we can imagine like this, so now we have a much bigger one. We have this same leading strand on the top and we have the lagging strand on the bottom. We're gonna have a bunch of these little fragments, a bunch of these little fragments. Um, and on the top, it's just going to go straight through like that, all right? Um, so we have all these fragments here. How is this going to be resolved? Well, DNA, DNA polymerase is going to come in again. So we have DNA polymerase, and it's going to remove all these primers. So it's going to remove all these primers, and it's going to uh, fill in with DNA, because remember, these primers are RNA, all right? So after that, it's going to look something like this, just straight like that. But this one will have a bunch of little gaps, all right? So now that we have all these gaps um, that are from the Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand, all right, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have that DNA ligase and just connect everything together, all right? All right, so we'll just connect these uh, fragments together and then you have two strands that are fully um, made. And so that's pretty much how it works, all right?